not about fighting. That's the first thing. It's just about knowing, you know? And if you learn it, hopefully you never use it, you know? There's an old samurai saying, I love it. It's my favorite saying. It was the, uh, the student goes to the, the, the teacher, the sensei, and he says, sensei, you know, you always talk about peace and like love and understanding and harmony, but we train in the art of war, you know? And, like, isn't that like, it's pretty brutal. And he said, the, the sensei says to the student, he says, uh, you know, better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. I was drawn more to the grappling at first, um, and then I started developing my striking, so I'm a bit more grappling oriented, but I do love, the, the funnest for me is getting in the cage and putting it all together. That's, that's the funnest part for me. It evolved into a passion and uh, something that I just want to pursue to the highest level, make what you love your career. And so yeah, I'm putting a lot of effort into, into this career path. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> think about what my life would be like without training and competing and I think it would be rather boring honestly mundane just you know working like a normal job or a normal career going to school just doesn't really interest me and uh, that idea kind of just keeps me motivated keeps me in here training You know, does it change everybody overnight? I don't think so. I don't think it even really changes. It just kind of allows people, it takes down some of the barriers, and then you see more of them. That's it. They're not changed. They just, you just see more. When you're young, you, uh, you gravitate to things, you know? And uh, I was always like a mischievous kid, rambunctious, and, and, and I wouldn't say like outgoing, but rambunctious for sure. And uh, you know, you're growing up and you watch TV and you see what's on TV and some of the things you see are, you know, teenage mutant. Like, like, I gotta say this. I think when you're young, what you first get exposed to definitely has impacts later on in life. And like, when I was young, like a kid, one of the biggest things I saw was this thing called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it rocked my world. I couldn't believe that, you know? And, you know, it's just, it's an interesting, you know, it's, it's you know, Rocky and those type of things. I had those type of outside influences. And I think those things, um, they left impressions, you know, to get started with, you know? This is terrible. <laughs> Kick your leg down. You never go hold anybody's leg like that. You wrap it. You hug it. Do you care? Yes, I care. So I, I drag that leg. See? <laughs> Here, uh, I stay tight for that leg. One more time. Here, like this. Time. Weird handshake. Here, tight. Hug it. Okay? This way you can like lift them, or throw them, trip their leg out, or scorn them for telling you that you're. Rhymes aren't good. Okay, so when we go with our partners today, we're not taking our partner down, we're getting to the leg. Okay, keep it. I did some other sports, I like them, but you know, it was, it just didn't mesh with me, you know, sometimes like team sports at that time, right? And you know, I liked them, but I was like, I was always like really pouty. And when you have social anxiety and then you're in a group setting, you know, it's, it's different. So for me, it kind of made sense, like a little bit of training in martial arts. I was kind of like that idea, you know? And I, you know, I, I got a little bit of a push actually from my, my grandfather because he did a little bit of boxing and he kind of suggested to my grandma, you know, take him to some boxing. And she was the one that kind of found a boxing club. And I started pretty young in boxing, around like 11 or something like that. So 
And that would be my first foray into martial arts. I felt around the six month mark, I really started to notice my thought patterns changed. So my whole life I've really been a really circular thinker where if there's a problem, I'll think about it like repeatedly until I can either solve it or um, stop thinking about it. I've put a lot of energy into like controlling my own thoughts and it's been like exhausting. It's really tiring being like, oh, don't think that, stop thinking about it. And I found here, um, the best way I could explain it is if you go for a walk on the treadmill, you know, you're taking the same step over and over, opposed to if you go for a walk down, um, you go for a hike down a trail where each step is a step you've never taken before. So your brain is telling you, oh, lift your foot over that route, and every step is a new step. So every, time, every step you take, you're making new connections in your brain. And I really think that that's what specifically jujitsu does is I'm learning all of these new things that I've never knew I didn't know and my brain is making all these new connections and it's really working my brain out in a way that I never have before and I feel almost like it's like flushed my brain like it's like cleansed it and I've been able to let go of a lot of my past trauma that I've held on for a long time like I almost just forget about a lot of it and I'm not thinking in those circular ways anymore. I'm having an easier time saying how I feel and then letting it go. So my relationships with um, friends, coworkers has really improved. I'm just not like obsessing about stuff anymore. So it's been actually pretty incredible. Because whenever hand stays on the head, that's the one that's good. We're going, yeah, that's right. Over there, there, up. Um, yeah. I, you know, did wrestling, like, you know, you do a PE wrestling, and I was like, this is really fun. And then they started a team, and I was like, well, maybe I'll try this. And I really, like, I just loved it. Wrestling was just like, it was great, because I could go as hard like you can in kind of a boxing, like physically, but you're not um, getting, like, you know, cracked in the head as much. <laughs> so, and it was just a really, uh, it was a challenge, and I enjoyed it. I didn't know I did until I tried it, right? You know, like most things, right? So I think that the way to look at it was I never knew that wrestling was a martial art. Didn't understand that. I didn't even know boxing is, really. These are just sports, right? And so when I was doing it, I didn't really think about wrestling. I never even really thought about as fighting too much, to be honest, when I was doing it. I never was like, oh, like boxing, you're like, oh, if I was in a fight, maybe I'll use my jab, maybe I'll use my cross. But wrestling was just something I did because it was fun and, you know, it was rough and it was difficult. So I, I don't want to say I, I was a wrestler by nature. I just happened to gravitate that way, if that made sense. And then over time, I had a better understanding that actually this can be used in combat. This is actually an effective system. I did everything kind of backwards. I did the things that you probably should have done if you really want to make an MMA fighter, but I didn't know that was it, you know? And I tried other things. I tried Kung Fu. I tried karate. I tried all these other things after I'd already done these martial arts that now we know are kind of the bee's knees of MMA. I'm doing everything backwards, you know, for a couple of years. Plus I'm just working and trying to like figure out what I want to do, you know? And so, yeah, I guess I kind of did it backwards. And then I kind of came full circle. Yeah. Um, and so, when did you first get? When did you first uh, hear and then just, and uh, and be aware that MMA became a thing? Well, there's two kind of things to that. So the first thing I would say is is that the, obviously UFC, right? And I mean, when I you couldn't watch the UFC on the internet when I was a kid, right? You, and it was, so I was probably like, I want to say I was like 14 or 15, okay? And then I saw some VHS, which is a, for those people out there, that's a video cassette thing. It's like a big tape 
a quarter. You won't even know what that is. Uh, but you know, tracking, and I could barely see the lines. It was actually a rip of a rip. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I watched it, and I was impressed. I think I, I want to say it was the first UFC, but I'm not sure. It might have been like the third or fourth. But Hoist Gracie won it. And uh, it, it was really interesting because he took guys down. I didn't know what he did when he hit the ground. I had no idea what the choke stuff was or any of that stuff. But I was really surprised that this little guy, compared to these other dudes, like when you see Ken Shamrock and these other guys and kickboxers, take all these guys down and choke them out. You know, that was really cool. And so then I was like, well, that's kind of, I didn't know that. Like I didn't, jujitsu was like a surprise to everybody back then. And then I would say I was around like 17 and I, that was when I first trained with like, a, and back then it was called pancreation or, or NHB. Yeah. So it wasn't called MMA. Actually, I, it was called NHB or pancreation actually. And that's how old I am. And uh, I started training with a guy named Darren Sagas and he had a little club out of his basement, not his basement, his, um, we called it the den. Uh, it was uh, his garage, like a parking garage he had. And it was really cool. And I would train there. And I mean, I had wrestling, so that was kind of cool and that helped me. But um, yeah, I got my butt kicked. And I was like, these guys, this is different. And this is kind of after I'd already done like some more traditional martial arts. Right. I dabbled in kickboxing too at that time too. I was all over the place because yeah. I didn't know what, I just wanted to have fun and have challenges. Yeah. So I would say those are kind of it. Darren Sagas and uh, getting an old VHS video and watching Hoist Gracie choke some people out. I think I, I think I enjoy the striking aspect, like the stand-up game a little bit more. Um, which means that I need to come and work on my grappling because that means that I'm, I'm bad at it, which is why I don't like it. So I definitely try to focus on my ground game because, um, you know, one thing I, I have noticed about doing this, you know, even for my short amount of time is that uh, you always learn the most when you're in those really uncomfortable positions and, you know, having someone sit on top of you and you know either twist your arm one way or choke you out is definitely an uncomfortable position so I'm very a very claustrophobic person and I've found that coming here and uh, you know wrestling and grappling and especially when someone's better than you, they spend a lot of time on top of you and kind of holding you down. And, and for me, that's like a very uncomfortable position. Um, you know, and earlier on, it was almost at the point where I was thinking about not coming back just because I was like, oh, you know, why would I subject myself to this, you know, however many times a week? And uh, I, you know, I kind of just made the decision that I was gonna, you know, come back one more time, come back one more time. And now I found that I, I've been able to manage that a lot better. And, you know, being able to manage it here has also, I think, paid dividends outside of the gym. And I'm, I'm able to manage that kind of thing as well. You know, that's a, a little bit more of like a, like a direct benefit that it's had for me, I think, just for a, a unique situation that I'm, I'm in, but it's helped out a lot. And, I, and, I, and I, I find now I'm putting myself in those uncomfortable positions here so that I can challenge myself in that way week after week because, um, I don't know, once, once, especially with grappling and stuff, once you're used to being in those terrible positions, it just, it, it gets less and less terrible every time. And if you're better in those positions when you're fighting someone, you're able to 
you know how to get yourself out a lot easier and you're able to stay calm and that's that's one of the most important things I think is keeping that clarity like in the heat of the moment. A lot of people make jokes and say it's a good way to take out anger, but I don't take out my anger, but I get to, you know, get my body moving at the very least. And that helps, I think, everybody to get your body moving when things get hard. Um, and just developing those healthy coping mechanisms um, that maybe other people don't have. I have this, this sport, this passion that uh, brings me back down to earth, you know, this is what I want to be doing, and I always get to come back to it at the end of the day. With my experience, um, I've been able to have a really big impact on my community as well on the reservation. Um, I think I've been put in a position where a lot of youth um, look up to me or their parents want them to look up to me and I think it's brought something really positive out of um, something that I enjoy doing regardless. I would be doing this regardless of people liked it or not. Um, but. You know, I go out and people see me and they talk to me about my fights and upcoming and when will I start teaching and when will I bring this out to the reserve and, and it's really interesting to see that this is something that people want me to bring into their lives. Um, so the impact on my life has, has been prominent just in the fact that people want me to include them in, in this journey as well, which is really interesting and really inspiring for me as well to, to keep pursuing it because it has such a positive impact on other people. I wanted to continue sports. I like competing, so I had like the competing mindset right from the get-go and I knew I wanted to compete. I actually was trying to like book fights uh, early in my training, like for six months type of thing, Raj shut it down right away. He was like, no, 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 you're not nowhere near. And then I went into grappling tournaments, like how you should do it and um, lots of learning there. And then I started getting wins and then I pushed on to amateur and now I've gotten to the pro ranks, which is pretty sweet. So definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of focus. Um, but I just, I had the drive to compete from the start. I had the goals and I, went after them really, yeah. give up a lot of your free time to do this. That's probably the biggest one. So you will, um, yeah, not hang out with friends, not going out partying. Um, you're trying to stay healthy with your diet. You just to uh, focus on one thing with your spare time, especially if you're working. There's not much spare time. Um, if you're working and training, it's, yeah, it definitely takes up your day. <laughs> takes time like a thousand years ago we used horses and I like things now you know I want to kind of see what works that's kind of why I think that like you know you think of martial arts and stuff like that and everyone kind of thinks of guys in the gi and, and that's cool don't get me wrong so I'm not saying that I'm of the belief that judo is one of the most important I, I think judo no, is sure is the most important martial artist of all time. Because he did, did a couple things really, really huge. First off, that stuff he does, that stuff works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that judo stuff really worked, you know? And he came from a society in Japan where like armed combat or unarmed combat were real theories and things to worry about. Yeah. So these guys are like, Shigeru Kano, 
had the foresight and idea to know that like, you know, we need to train hard. We need to train, like actually train, not just this is how it's done. This is what it looks like. And then just be like done with class. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, now we did all the technique. Let's do this. Let's see if we can make it happen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that was really cool. Uh, I'll have time for me to learn that, okay? And it's gonna take time for you guys too, all right? Um, so, and then come around. You know, what I really like now is when you make somebody, or not make, but like when they become much, uh, they grow. You see them grow, and then I can stand next to this person, and I can talk to them, and like we understand each other's language, and they can be like, what about, what do you think of this? And you're like, that's a pretty good idea, actually. I didn't think about that. Or, you know, they, they're they like, you know, I like, I like doing this here what do you think and you're like that's pretty good too like it's it surprised me i'm standing there next to these people and i'm just like huh <laughs> you might be smarter than i am at this you know what i mean like i gotta go back to study a little bit you know what i mean look at some stuff but it was good it's good for me because it humbles me and i really like that they are they grow and they become like their own little i always make a joke about i call them you get you become your own little jitsu you know you become your own over time once you're proficient, you become, you know, a little, my thing, maybe it might be called Rajitsu. You know, I have a couple of students like uh, Tara and uh, Josh, and they're new, but eventually they'll have their things, Tara Jitsu, Josh Jitsu, you know? And so I, I really like that. And I see like Riley and, and Connor and Damon, and these are the competitors and the fighters, and I can have conversations and talk to them and ask them things, and they can ask me too. And I really like that, you know? So, gives you input. So. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> jab lead, jab cross, jab round. So I'm here, hands up high, round, lead. Well, what is your next step, 12 months? This next fight coming up in March, if I win that, that's the amateur title. You know, I'm not sure if, if uh, I wanna, hang around and defend the title or just go straight pro. go day by day and you know you know hope for the best and just just train hard you know just work on my mentality just improve every day and then have that fight if we win that fight you know schedule a pro fight potentially I would say that the thing that I probably am most proud of is that I made it to here. Honestly, like it's been 10 years and we built this thing and then not just me, like I got my wife, I got my students, Riley, Damon, Connor, obviously like everybody else, Josh and, and Tara have been a big part too now more recently, but we survived. We survived COVID. We survived a financial meltdown. Maybe there might be another one, <laughs> I hope not. But you know, we survived all these like, these uh, pretty weird moments. Like, I'll be honest with you, you know, and now it seems like we got a little momentum and I really like that. I think that, you know, also, you know, with the UFC being like the only sport for two years almost, or a year and a little bit, right? That was a big deal, you know, and I think that helped kind of show people and the sport now is here. That's the other thing too. It's not gonna go away. If there's not gonna be some legislation that bans MMA, and it feels really like a weight because it's kind of weird when you're in a sport that like half the half the, like governments are banning, you know? And it's, it kind of almost makes you feel like, like, am I a criminal or something? Like, what am I doing that's so wrong? Like, this stuff is really cool and I know it's like awesome, you know? And maybe in the beginning of the sport, there were 
people in it that gravitated that were maybe not the greatest uh, moral fibers and characters. But now it's just like, man, I'm telling you, we got, we got the bee's knees of the coolest people. It's really funny and like people are nice and awesome. And I mean, you might watch like the UFC and see guys bicker or whatever. I almost guarantee you everybody's really cool behind the stage and stuff. MMA is here. People are seeing it, it's for everybody. It's not just about fighting, it's just building, developing, physical exercise, fun. There's lots of positives to it. Plus, on weekends, we get to all get together, see some people lock themselves in a cage, and find out who's better that night. <laughs>